along the path of the beam. I am known on this level of the tower as Jaime and Fuego, and if it please you, join me here for a bit of palaver on Hell! The Stephen King, that's right, my favorite author, as you see by the tower of tomes that is behind me there. So, uh, bienvenidos, and welcome to the horror show where I do hail to Stephen King twice a week, every terrifying Tuesday, every spooktacular Saturday, and uh, yes, for over 160 episodes now, uh, two and a half years, what a fun process of just continued coverage that I am in the midst of. And here in the year of 19, we just keep being graced with all kinds of cool things from re-releases of books like The Colorado Kid to a new King novel coming later this September in the Institute. We have all of the different adaptations, new reimaginings. We had Pet Cemetery already. We still have uh, Dr. Sleep finally coming to screen thanks to none other than uh, you know the haunting of Hill House himself Mike Flanagan we still have it chapter 2 coming we've got creep show uh, I mean just so much stuff mr. Mercedes season 3 Castle Rock season 2 god damn there's so much but uh, with it chapter 2 in mind there is a very cool project that I wanted to inform all of you about that has finally seen the light of day and you can watch it for free on Fangoria's Facebook. They also tweeted about it yesterday because it just went live. It is none other than Ryan Grulick and John Campompiano's very cool fan film called Georgie. Yes, Georgie is a project that first came on my radar about 10 months ago when a crowdfunding was launched for this short. And it's about seven minutes and some change and it's, it's a trip. It most definitely is. Essentially, envision the scenario of what would happen if somehow our dead uh, little Georgie dude, you know, Big Bill's little broski who got his arm ripped off, was, was somehow able to manifest in like still a dead but slightly aged form and you know this obviously taking place back in Derry and it's just a very strange and surreal film. I just got done watching it and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's quite interesting, I gotta say. So to give some background about uh, John Campopiano specifically is the fact that he was behind Unearthed and Untold, The Path to Pet Cemetery, which came out in 2017. It was a full length, 85 minute, awesome awesome documentary about maybe the best Stephen King story. It's arguable, as I have all too often said on here. There is the unholy trinity of Psy King stories, at least for me, and it's it, it's Pet Cemetery, and it's The Stand, and the three of them all fluctuate, you know, as what's my favorite and stuff. And I'm actually uh, just getting ready to do another reread of It later this year before the film comes out, and I did another reread for the upteenth time of Pet Cemetery. But yeah, there's um, there's a lot of really cool supplemental stuff on the new 30th anniversary Pet Cemetery uh, Blu-ray 4K and DVD that was recently put out earlier this year as well. But I still don't think that supplemental stuff really holds a candle to the awesome deep dive that we get from the full-length documentary. I highly, highly recommend it. It's uh, it's wonderfully put together, all kinds of archival and new, uh, I mean, like, archival stuff from, like, King on speaking engagements and stuff like that, but, I mean, between new interviews with Mary Lambert and Denise Crosby and just so many people involved in the project on both the behind-the-scenes and in front of the camera aspect. I mean, you've got, uh, you've, oh man, there's just so much good stuff, but I'm obviously here talking about, uh, you know, about Georgie and about various other things, but yeah, I cannot recommend uh, that Pet Cemetery doc enough. It's awesome. And then the other thing that popped up on our radar, which was coming later this year, and I didn't even know that John had a hand in all of these different things until he reached out to me on Facebook. So definitely shout out to him. And the fact that he is also a writer slash producer behind the upcoming IT documentary about the original miniseries that is currently in post-production. And so we did a trailer reaction to that uh, a few months ago here on The Horror Show. And then I know that there is also an extended trailer that I think was put out in the last few months. I'm trying to remember if that's the one that we reacted to or if it was the, uh, or if it was the earlier one. But that doc looks ridiculously awesome as well. I mean, it's got, it's got new interviews with Tim Curry and with tons of other people involved in the cast and the creationary process. And 
I, I do feel like the new film that we got in 2017, it stole a little bit of thunder from the original miniseries and the fact that everybody loved it, it was, it had so much more in cinematic scope to it and the fact that it was R-rated and the fact that it had, you know, bigger budget and, you know, some of these slick bells and whistles and that's not to discredit Andy's project in any way, shape or form. I'm extremely excited for the September release of Chapter 2. I... I really enjoyed the 2017 and I didn't absolutely over the moon love it like a lot of people but that's because of the fact that the original documentary that or excuse me the original miniseries I should say that this doc is covering scared the living crap out of me as a kid it genuinely did and one of the main reasons for that was the performance from Tony Dakota who comes to reprise his role in this Georgie and you know little seven minute and some change fan film and uh, yeah, I mean, his performance as a kid, where he's like, you let me die, Bill, and all that stuff, that haunted my dreams, man, you know, as a kid. And so it's very interesting for this Georgie short to see him come back. Now, don't, don't come into this expecting something on the production level of Muchetti's It, or even with the exact sensibilities of the of the miniseries, but I mean, it's it's honestly, it's it's a freak out trip of a dream, especially once, you know, uh, Georgie finally does show up a few minutes into it, and we have a kind of psychedelic animated sequence of sorts that actually gave me some shades of like, um, Oh boy, I don't know. I'm trying to think of uh, so there's there's definitely the trip out stuff that I saw in the 90s, whether it was uh, you know like in the Beavis Butthead movie or I mean just so many interesting things that just went to this kind of freaked out animated style. And he's uh, it's it's very just intriguingly put together. I I gotta say it wasn't exactly what I was anticipating, and that was a good thing actually. You know, and there's there's weird like you know mother-son connections with umbilical cords and I mean just seeing this grown-up Tony Dakota who played Georgie especially like beat for beat in a few cases mimicking some of Tim Curry's Pennywise like laps and gestures and mannerisms and in a clown costume no less it's a it's a trippy little film this thing is and I mean yeah I, I definitely recommend y'all go and go and check it out because uh, I, yeah, unfortunately there's none of those crowdfunding like specialties or anything left at least not to the best of my knowledge but uh, you know reach out on, uh, on on social media or something of that nature to you know check out uh, Check it out. But yeah, once again, it was debuted yesterday, courtesy of Fangoria. I know they tweeted about it, as I mentioned earlier. So, uh, but it is streaming for free on their Facebook page, and that's where that's where you can watch it and give it a gander. There's also uh, a funny little cameo. I don't, I know he's not playing Stanley, but the actor who played the young Stanley Uris in uh, the original miniseries, he actually has a little cameo as this jogger in the film as well, and. It's, I, I don't want to divulge and spoil anything, but it gets just very psychedelic and very strange. It starts out just, you know, a little eerie and surreal and stuff, and there's like little tinges of black humor, but the back few minutes of this, especially a beat with the house that, you know, it's, I, I know they filmed it on the West Coast uh, in the Seattle area, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, I, there, is, there is a beat with the house and a balloon that's really, really trippy and pretty pretty dope looking I have to say and uh, so yeah there's it's it's a visually creative and interesting thing and it really makes me just excited to see you know what else uh, you know John and Ryan and uh, you know just whoever else they worked with on this that is of note can put together for a full-length project you know I mean yeah John has been doing the whole documentary thing as I as I mentioned and so I am extremely extremely excited for Pennywise the story of it so definitely go and do some research on that everybody if you haven't had the chance to go and, and watch the extended trailer because it is just it's a pure joygasm for constant readers like myself and then also go and do yourself a favor especially if you love pet cemetery and seek out that previous documentary uh, the full length from 2017 you know the the unearthed and untold path to pet cemetery that's really really rad as well and i mean just just based on the level of craftsmanship that was already put into that previous doc i know the pennywise one is going to be rad and just yeah seeing i i love 
fan like fictiony sorts of this. I mean, hell, we made a fan film ourselves based on a Stephen King co-written property called uh, American Vampire. I actually had the distinction and the honor of playing Skinner Sweet in a little western that we did. And so, I mean, fan film stuff like this, it's unfortunate you can't really... You have to find your ways to make a profit from it when you're using somebody else's IP like this, and hence the fact that it's for free, but, you know, to get the, you know, perks together for different people to help with the funding process and whatnot. It's just that, I don't know, awesome stuff like Never Hike Alone is another one that I have to mention, which is a terrific full length that, uh, you know, and also Voorhees, which is one that Cody Falk is putting together. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening in the creative realm of just, I mean, the fact that so many people now can get access to better equipment to, you know, film and record and in the post-production process. And I mean, the fact that we have so many of these tools at our fingertips that can rival stuff, you know, done on like decent budgets with, uh, you know, with horror and with things of that nature. It's just a very exciting time, not just to be, uh, you know, just fan of horror in general, but obviously to be a Psy King fan with, you know, things like this coming through the pipeline. It's pretty badass. So obviously I got to give one more shout out to John Campopiano and uh, yes, just Google him, jump on the, you know, his IMDB where you can see a few of the other credits and stuff that he has. Although it doesn't, for whatever reason, list um, the, uh, you know, Pennywise, the story of it, that even though he's listed on the separate page for that, um, yeah, you, anyway, just go seek all three of those things out. Seek out Georgie on the Fangoria Facebook, and, uh, yes, let me know in the comments below your thoughts on it, and, uh, just stay up on the process of Pennywise, the story of it as well, because, yes, once again, it's a very exciting time to be a constant reader and a fan of Side King. So, this is a shorter episode, once again, of Hail for the sheer fact that one, I wanted to jump right when the iron is hot and just urge everybody to check this out and see what they think about it. It's it's definitely interesting. And uh, also because tonight I'm heading to an early screening with uh, Cecil and uh, some other members of the show for Men in Black International. I don't know. Could go either way. Could be good, could be bad. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for possibly a... Uh, well, it's either going to be on In Fuego Tame and my personal channel or it's going to be over on the horror show depending on how much alien -y, creature -y goodness we actually get out of it. So uh, that's another reason for a shorter episode today. But yes, go check out Georgie. Uh, check out both of the documentaries that I mentioned, the one on Pet Cemetery and the one on uh, Pennywise, the story of it, and that awesome miniseries. That I still think the miniseries holds up, and Tony Dakota's performance, as uh, short as it was in just those few scenes, left a lasting impression, and that's why it's a very it's a pretty dope novelty to see him reprise the role in such a weird fever dream of uh, trippiness type aspect. So, I have been Jaime in Fuego. Y'all can find me on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and YouTube is where if you just search in Fuego Tainment, just like the little logo that you see down there, that's where you can find my reviews of stuff that's not of the spectacular variety. So most recently I reviewed Dark Phoenix. I've also done reviews lately of, uh, boy, uh, Long Shot, Book Smart, uh, just various others, and I'm also doing ongoing Star Wars complete canon coverage where I'm doing the Marvel comic books, I'm doing some of the tie-in novels, I'm doing all of the films proper, including the, you know, spin-off and side films and stuff, one every month as we lead up to episode nine. So I uh, greatly look forward to y'all jumping over there, doing the like, share, and subscribe thing, because it is very badass of you if that is in fact the case and you make your way over there, but obviously, you're here for Psy King coverage for the spooktacular, and on the horror show, we do at least an episode, sometimes two, every single day. Whether it's a trailer reaction, whether it's a film or a television series or a comic book review or something like that. We just recently put up our full season coverage of Joe Hill's adaptation on AMC of his novel Nosferatu. You've heard me talk about this book quite a few times on Hail to Stephen King and just in in general. I love the book. I didn't love the adaptation, but I really enjoyed a lot of what it did. And if you sign up for AMC Premiere, which is like five more bucks a month, or you can just sign up for the free trial and binge all 10 episodes right now, which is what Cecil and I did for our review. And uh, yes, make sure to uh, check that out. Check out all of the other coverage that we have constantly going on. And uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that's the book of the month 
for the Hail to Stephen King Quartet, as I so affectionately call it, is none other than Mr. Mercedes. At the end of every month, I do a live stream where we have a discussion, a palaver, all about the book of the month, and the book of the month is either chosen by moi or by the Hail to Stephen King Facebook group, which if you're down with Psych King, if you're a constant reader, if you're a tower junkie, you know, whatever the hell you may be, or if you're just really scared shitless by clowns and you want to investigate Psych King stuff further, jump onto the Hail group, over 500 strong, but you know, a very closely knit content with terrific palaver, lots of respect, lots of very interesting, diverse opinions from all over the world. We are global, yo, and it is a humbling and honoring process just to get to share these experiences about my favorite author with all of you. So I guess I'm going to finish things up with my go-to and say until the wheel of Ka comes around once more, I say hasta luego, sin amigos, and constant readers and viewers alike. I'm hopeful that we get to share more of this palaver sooner rather than later. And until that instance transpires, remember, stay scared. And read Stephen King. Come on, if you haven't read it yet. I know it's the size of like a, a doorstopper or something, but God dizzle, is it worth your while?